Over the past several years, automakers have continued to provide consumers with increased options in terms of battery electric vehicles or plug-in hybrid electrics. Now, the rationale, of course, is that we need to become more sustainable with personal transportation, and we have to reduce the overall impacts that automobiles have on our environment. Now, as consumers have been continuing to uh, have more uh, vehicles offered to them, such as this uh, all-new 2018 Honda Clarity plug-in hybrid, which I've been driving this week. Actually, I drove this for the first time in uh, Arizona uh, a couple of months ago, and if you want to see that full first drive review, please do so. It's available uh, both on my YouTube channel and on my website. But uh, this Honda Clarity is an example of the new options that are out there, yet uptake has been slow and steady, but also limited by some external factors. There are some technological challenges that still exist today, uh, increasing EV infrastructure, uh, uh, ranges and battery sizes and such, but some of the challenges exist are also based on misconceptions. One of those misconceptions that I want to deal with today is the fact that people are uh, have this belief that EVs are not suitable for drivers who live in climates that have to deal with winter. Well, I live in Canada and I deal with winter all the time and I drive EVs and plug-in hybrids throughout all four seasons as part of my job. And I can tell you that that is largely a misconception because there are certain things that you can do to uh, deal with the limitations that cold weather can have on battery electric driving. Hey, let, let's be honest, winter can uh, have impacts on regular gasoline engines too. But on this report, I want to talk about some of those misconceptions as well as show you some tips as to how you can uh, get rid of that misconception and enjoy electrified driving in cold weather or anywhere you want to drive. In the wintertime, it's important to note that both battery electrics, plug-in hybrids, and regular internal combustion engines um, are less efficient overall. They have uh, different contributing factors that make them so. Um, Comparatively speaking, um, a, a electric car is more efficient um, than gasoline cars because uh, the electric motor, it's more efficient at turning um, the stored electricity into motion than say an internal combustion engine would be at converting the uh, chemical energy in gasoline into uh, mechanical energy, which is needed to go forward. You know, in fact, uh, internal combustion technology, which is like a century old, uh, is still woefully inefficient. About 60% uh, of the energy uh, from gasoline is turned into heat, while only about 20% of that is used to drive the wheels. Now, in wintertime, that serves as an advantage for an internal combustion engine because um, that uh, wasted heat can be uh, converted and, and blown into the cabin, and that's how a, a gasoline vehicle would uh, heat up the car. Uh, a battery, which only loses about 10% of uh, the energy into heat, uh, has to struggle to do that since it can't rely upon the wasted heat. So what it does is it has to manufacture heat. Um, the heating systems can be, unfortunately, a big draw on range. In fact, uh, there's been studies done that can show that the heating in the wintertime, depending on how cold it gets, can waste as much as 40% of the range, typical range, as it would have in optimal sort of weather conditions. So you can, you can alter that. And what auto manufacturers are doing nowadays is a better way to do so is to heat using, say, a heat pump. And a heat pump is kind of like a, the reverse of an air conditioner. Um, the, the challenge, of course, is when you're taking that situation, you're taking the warmth from the air outside and bringing it in, is the colder it gets, the more arctic conditions you get get the less efficient it becomes. So how do you come up, overcome these ideas and how do you overcome these challenges? Well, there's a couple tips here. One of the things that you can do, of course, is um, a lot of electric vehicles nowadays and plug-in hybrids have both uh, heated seats and even heated steering wheels. It takes less energy to heat the area of a seat and a wheel than it would be to heat the blowing air inside a cabin. So if you use those, uh, generally speaking, people have a feeling of warmth um, and that can, can allow you to either um, lower the uh, the temperature setting for the uh, the blower unit or the the heat pump, or in some cases you can just eliminate it altogether if you're if it's not terribly cold outside and you're feeling warm enough, you don't need that. And you can extend the range. But perhaps the best thing you could do overall is you can uh, precondition your electric vehicle while it's still plugged in. 
most of the automakers nowadays who have electric vehicles will have an app that you can download to your smartphone and while you're say having your breakfast or getting ready or if you're in an office setting if the vehicle is still connected to an AC power supply or to a charger unit then you just have the engine uh, or and the, the car start to warm up while connected to the power source as opposed to draining from the battery it's a it's an important thing too because uh, I mean batteries even uh, are beneficial they help to be warm because a warm battery can receive uh, the regenerative energy that comes from braking and that's the, one of the ways you extend range altogether so by plugging it in you're actually heating it without using uh, any of the range and, and uh, or any of the, the energy stored in the battery and drastically reducing your range you know automotive regular cars can do that too by you know you're turning it on you're warming up the car but the benefit here is you're not uh, idling the engine and uh, at burning fuel and emitting carbons whereas here it's just plugged in to the regular AC supply. So there's an old adage when it comes to uh, fuel efficient driving, and that's, it's not what you drive, it's how you drive. And no matter what car you have, be it a, a V8 or a BEV, uh, how you drive is gonna affect your overall fuel consumption or energy use. Uh, in winter conditions with a BEV, that holds especially true. Uh, one of the key tricks, of course, is how you deal with the accelerator, how much of a lead foot you have. Uh, easy on the accelerator is one way to reduce fuel consumption and uh, the amount of battery use you're going to use because it makes perfect sense the more you're asking a vehicle to perform off from a start stop position the more fuel or energy it's going to have to use um, with electric vehicles and all vehicles sometimes you don't necessarily need to be on the gas pedal or the accelerator where there are situations where you can coast the benefit of driving an electric vehicle and coasting is that you allow the regenerative uh, component of uh, energy transfer to take hold so if you're, say, on a downhill gradient, uh, instead of pushing on the pedal, if it's safe to do so, if there's no one behind you uh, or a safe distance behind you, just let off and let the regenerative feature start to bring kinetic energy back into the battery. Same thing with when you're braking. When you brake, um, it's actually far better to gradually brake as opposed to a hard brake. The, the more you're pushing down on the, the pedal or the brake pedal, the more kinetic energy you can return to the battery, thus extend the overall life of the uh, of the range that you have another thing that's important to mention is uh, you know to dispel the myths about EV driving in cold weather climates um, it's interesting to note that um, the country in the world that has the highest EV uh, uh, usage rate per capita uh, is Norway and Norway, as we know, is certainly a country known for its northern climate and winter conditions. Now, of course, the high EV adoption rate in Norway certainly uh, has uh, quite a bit to do with uh, generous incentives that the uh, Norwegian government has uh, for EV drivers. But it, it needs to be said as well that, uh, you know, nobody is going to buy a vehicle, no matter how many incentives there are, if it doesn't meet their needs. And uh, Norwegians, by and large, are buying them. And even in that condition, if it if it meets their needs there, well, it's certainly EV driving in winter is going to meet the, the needs of someone here in Canada or in the northern U.S. There still are some technical limitations, I will admit, that uh, are inhibiting mass adoption of electric vehicles into mainstream society. But there are also misconceptions out there, and one by one, we're trying to knock them down. I hope that this video has at least dealt with one of those, that is the misconceptions that you can't own a, an electric vehicle if you live in a climate that has winter conditions. You totally can. Uh, Norway has proven to be a perfect example of that, and other northern climates are continuing to see adoption as well. If you're looking for more information about electric vehicles, uh, here in Canada at least, there are sites and online resources available where you can find out information about rebates uh, that may exist and other information about new electric vehicles. Uh, one organization that has put something together is environmental defense and if you were to go to their website yournextchoice.ca you can find out some pretty good information that exists out there by signing up you should go check it out for envirodad.com i'm eric novak thanks for watching there's plenty of ways for you to keep connected with me so check out some of my social media links suggested videos and you know i'd really love it if you subscribe to my youtube channel